when you fast, you put yourself in a state of autophagy in a low blood sugar state, right? So why keto OMAD is so powerful is that it com it continues that state of healing because you eat a keto diet. It's going to keep those blood sugars low while you eat. So you get that maximum fat burning. Fast occasionally. Fasting is so good for you because again, I just mentioned fasting puts you you put your body in a state of healing. Your body needs to heal from all of these processed garbage that we've been consuming. Today, I wanna to talk about why autophagy helps with weight loss. Why autophagy has helped me lose stubborn weight on my weight loss journey. I started my weight loss journey at 282 pounds and I found the most success with one meal a day. I lost over 110 pounds on my weight loss journey. One meal a day is a diet that you basically eat or it's a way of eating, time-restricted eating, keto one meal a day or keto OMAD is a diet. Let's just be technical here. Basically, you fast for 20 hours per day and you eat within a four-hour eating window or you fast for 23, 24 hours a day and you eat in a one hour eating window. Now I'm gonna tell you why this method has been so successful for me and a lot of people. And not only that, why the keto diet has been so successful. So the reason why I combined one meal a day with keto is you got super, I guess, blood sugar healing and autophagy. You got the blood sugar and autophagy. So when you fast, fasting is the fastest way to bring your blood sugar levels to a low level. Why do we want to do this? When we have spikes in blood sugar, we basically put our body in a situation where it's going to have too much glucose, where it's going to store that glucose as fat. Our mitochondria is an organ now within our cells that is responsible com for converting glucose into ATP, which is energy. When that mitochondria is overwhelmed because we have too much glucose in our system, why does this happen? It not doesn't just happen because of the sugar, it happens because of the processed foods, processed carbohydrates. Foods that are Latin, laden in chemicals just disrupt our mitochondrial health. Mitochondrial health is associated with so many conditions from cancer to chronic inflammation and so forth. So Basically, when you put yourself in a situation of fasting, it allows your mitochondria to recover and it puts you into a state of autophagy. Autophagy is so important in this day and age because as you know, our food is littered with so many toxins. Roundup is Agent Orange, pretty much, which is what was used as warfare chemicals back in the 1970s. Our food is laden with all these dyes, all of these chemical preservatives that have been linked to cancer, that have been linked to obesity. They're literally called obesogens. And fasting helps us combat these obesogens. And the reason why I had success and many other people had success with fasting is because Fasting puts our body in a state of autophagy. Autophagy is the cleanup of the cell. So when our body is on a sugar high and has excess glucose, our body turns that excess glucose to fat. Do not get mad at your body for doing that because our body does that to protect us because it removes that glucose from the system, from our bloodstream, and turns it into fat as opposed to leaving it there. If you leave that glucose there, it's gonna damage vital tissues and organs. It's gonna damage your kidneys, your livers. It's gonna cause cell death. It's gonna cause necrosis, so the rottening of tissues. This is what you see with people with end-of-stage diabetes. They may lose their eyesight. They may have neuropathy, so that's issues with the brain. Alzheimer's is type three diabetes. So the fact that our body stores the glucose as fat is protecting our body, our, ourselves. And it's giving our body a little bit more time to, you know, I guess not get to the inevitable early death. That's what we don't want. So when we put ourselves in a stage of autophagy, a process called mitophagy happens. Mitophagy is basically a form of autophagy where our body basically gets rid of damaged mitochondria. When we get rid of damaged mitochondria, we help our body heal because damaged mitochondria causes a positive feedback loop of basically reactive oxygen species. And reactive oxygen species are 
Something that happens when we have too much glucose in our mitochondria. Our mitochondria get stressed. It stresses out the electron transport chain, which is a part of cellular respiration. So basically turning glucose into energy. And this can wreak havoc. It can damage DNA. It can damage RNA. It can cause cancer, inflammation, and chronic ailments. So autophagy puts our body in a state of getting rid of these damage mitochondria, which will help reduce that negative effect. And I love how when it comes to weight loss now, I think it's easy when people focus on bringing the blood sugar levels down. Because remember, blood sugar spikes causes the body to secrete insulin. It makes our pancreas secrete insulin. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. Remember that. So we want to bring those spikes down. Now, here are some simple steps you can follow to help Put yourself in a state of low blood sugar. Things to do and things to avoid. Number one, you want to eat foods that are natural. I will heart this until the day I die. Eat natural foods. You don't want to eat foods that are written in chemicals. So avoid things, boxed foods. Eat whole foods. Eat frozen vegetables. If you're having struggles getting in vegetables, go frozen. Look at the ingredient list. Educate yourself. The first five ingredients are, or the first, so basically with the ingredient list, the closer it is to the beginning, the more of that product is in there. So let's, for example, in one ingredient list, something says glucose. That means that ingredient has a lot of glucose in it, or if glucose is one of, or fructose is one of the first five ingredients. The closer it is to the end, the less it has in it. So just keep that in mind. So you want to have foods with not a long ingredient list to begin with. But if it does, please make sure that at the beginning of the list are things that you can pronounce and things that are natural. You want to focus on eating foods with less of a long, lengthy ingredient list. Because these things that have long ingredient lists have a lot of toxins. And when these toxins enter our body, it's going to make us very difficult to lose weight. It's going to keep our system out of whack. It's going to make us sluggish. It's going to make us tired. It's going to make our body hold on to fat. Did you know that a lot of these obesogens, so these are the, the things in foods, the chemical pie that is um, in our food. So things that don't make sense, things that are these long chemical names and you're like, what the hell? Obesogens tell our stem cells. So the stem cells are the cells in our body that it's the universal cells. So it can turn any into any cell. A stem cell can turn into a muscle cell. It can turn, for example, I'm just using an example here. It can turn into a, a you know a lymphocyte, a, a cell that's a part of our immune system, a white blood cell. Obesogens tell our stem cells to turn into fat cells. So it even makes that feedback loop 10 times worse. So this is why it's so important to not eat these foods with toxic ingredients. Number two, eat a diet high in fat and protein. Prioritize protein. Yes, protein does spike your glucose levels more than fat. However, protein is so important for repair. Protein's part of everything. Especially for weight loss, you want to be eating foods high in protein for a number of reasons. It keeps you satiated. Protein is made of everything. Protein is going to help you build muscle. Fat is going to help curb down that glucose level. The only way that protein can spike your glucose level is that if you put yourself in a, if you're trying to focus on being keto and then you eat too much protein, you go into gluconeogenesis where that protein turns into glucose, that's fine. Don't worry about that because that's our body turning protein into glucose and that energy pathway has a lot of energy being involved. So you're burning a lot of calories when you do that. So just don't worry about that. Focus on getting in your fats and your protein. Carbs should come from fruits and vegetables and natural carbs. Here are a list of natural carbs. Sweet potato is a great carb to have. Quinoa, beans, lentils, chickpeas, brown rice, farro, bargol. These things have, or bulgur, I think it's called. These things have um, no gluten and they're more close to source. Sprouted breads and ancient grains. These carbs are more likely to not cause, or they will not cause you to have these adverse effects that processed carbohydrates do as opposed to these carbs. White bread, white rice, 
um, anything deep fried, all the good stuff, pizza, um, processed flour, you know, all that stuff is going to wreak havoc on your system. So focus on nature's carbs. Those are some good nature's carbs. I mentioned sweet potatoes, awesome. Quinoa is awesome because it's high in fiber. Obviously fruits and vegetables, you can't go wrong with that. Number four, fast occasionally. Fasting is so good for you because again, I just mentioned fasting puts you, you put your body in a state of healing. Your body needs to heal from all of these processed garbage that we've been consuming. So put your body in a state of fasting. If you can't do prolonged fast, do 16-8. Do 18-6. Do an OMAD here or there. Throw yourself in a state of fasting to give your body a chance to repair. The longer you're, you fast, the more better it is going to be for you, especially if you're dealing with really resistant weight loss or if you're dealing with morbid obesity, throw in some 72 hour fast in there because you need to get some deep healing. Food order hack. This is the way to eat in a way that does not spike your blood sugar. So have a shot of vinegar, apple cider vinegar before you eat. Or if you're not going to do that, eat your fruits and vegetables first. Get in your fiber. Feed the gut microbiome first. Then from there, have your fats and proteins. Then have your carbs. This will lower the blood sugar spike. Anyway, I hope this made sense. I kind of restructured this video a little differently than my last video, but I wanted people to understand the power of autophagy and why it has helped people lose weight, why the keto diet has helped people lose weight. Let's emphasize that. So when you fast, you get into autophagy, low blood sugar state, right? Keto OMAD, that's what I did. When you fast, you put yourself in a state of autophagy in a low blood sugar state, right? So why Keto OMAD is so powerful is that it com it continues that state of healing because you eat a keto diet. It's gonna keep those blood sugars low while you eat. So you get that maximum fat burning. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please drop a thumbs up in the comment and I'm sending you guys my love. Take care, bye.